Hey everyone, welcome to Family Devotional. My name is David Grant. I'm the Next Gen Pastor here at 12 Stone. And um, what that means is I get to serve um, the adult leaders who get to serve your students and your children. I really think I have the best job in the world. We have a great, great team. Hey, as a parent, I wanna remind you at 12stone.com slash church online, there are great resources for you to use with your students and with your children. Really encourage you, I think they'll be helpful to you. So um, this little family devotional is a little bit different than the others that we've been doing. Um, I'm technically not legally related to anybody around the circle, um, although I'd like to be, that'd be nice. Um, but here, this is what we do on Wednesday nights. Across our campuses on Wednesday nights, what we have is high school students that get in circles like this to talk about the things of life. They talk about serious issues and truth. We thought it'd be great for you to peek in and kind of invite your family into what we typically do on Wednesday nights. Okay, so why don't you introduce yourself? Emily and I are co-leading this process. So Emily, why don't you start? Yeah, I'm Emily Jones. I'm the middle school pastor at Central Campus. And yeah, I think that's it. And? Oh, and I have a baby on the way. That's Yay. exciting. And so you're married? I'm married to another pastor on staff, Caleb <laughs> Jones. They're, I'm apparently forgetting everything. No, it's yeah. good, it's good. <laughs> and I'm Zach. I'm a senior over at Buford High School and I attend the Buford campus. My name is Vonnay. I'm a junior at Discovery High School and I attend Central Campus. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing next year, Zach? I'm going to be at Samford. Um, pursuing a career in ministry. Oh, wow, Yay. in Birmingham, right? Mm -hmm. Very good, that's exciting. Awesome. Well, hey, tonight we're talking about a guy named Gideon, and I love this story because Gideon's just an ordinary uh, ordinary guy. So um, grab your Bibles and turn to Judges chapter six. We're gonna be um, begin reading in verse 11 in a minute, but as you're turning there, everybody's flipping um, to Judges, maybe you got a phone or a device you're using there. Hey, let me give you just a little bit of background about the book of Judges. By the way, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, right? So it's at the left side of your Bible. Okay, so here's what's going on in, in the book of Judges. The children of Israel have taken the promised land, the, the, the land that God um, had promised to them. But what they do every once in a while, they, they start worshiping other gods. And so God sends foreign nations to actually come in to attack them and to live and inhabit that land. And then when the children of Israel cry out, they basically say, God, will you deliver us? Will you rescue us? And so God sends somebody like Gideon to rescue his people. And that's where we are. We kind of walk into the story where, where God's calling Gideon to do something beyond himself. So Zach, do you want to read um, verse 11 for us? Yeah. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Okay, so important question here. Um, he's in a wine press threshing wheat. Okay, when's the last time you guys threshed wheat? Uh, never. Mm, never. 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 Um, it's so much, I hadn't done it either. But anyway, so he's in, <laughs> he's in a wine press threshing wheat. Why do you think he was in a wine press instead of like out in the open when the air could kind of take the, the wheat and do what it's supposed to do? Because he was scared. Yeah, I mean, people were coming and taking their food. He had a family to take care of. So I wouldn't blame him for trying to make sure that he had everything he needed. Yeah, he can't roll out to Kroger and get hamburger and bread and those kind of things. He has to actually prepare the food for his family. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing it out in the open, they would throw the wheat up in the air and the chaff would be blown by the wind. Instead, he's actually hiding in a wine press, which kind of makes sense because he's, he's in a scary, scary time mm -hmm. with the Midianites taking over, taking over the land. So the angel comes and sits down beside him, which is weird. It doesn't say he was scared. Yeah. Is that weird to you guys too? Yeah. But anyway, an angel Angels shows up. Angels aren't normal. No, so. they're not normal. Well, maybe to him they were. I, you know, yeah, it's kind of strange. He just kind of goes on his way. And um, look what the angel says. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord with you, mighty warrior. I mean, I am mm -hmm. thresh, I'm Gideon, I'm threshing wheat in a wine press because I'm afraid the Midianites are gonna steal my food. And yet God calls me a mighty warrior. Why is that? It's actually extremely ironic if you think about it, because mm -hmm. if you're Gideon, you're hiding in a wine press, you're just trying to provide for your family, you're probably in a lot of fear, and the mm -hmm. last thing you would think of yourself is a mighty warrior. Uh, but the truth behind this is that God saw something in Gideon that Gideon did not see in himself. Yeah. And I think that actually is true of us. God sees something in each, every one of us that we don't see in ourselves. And I think that God sees something in you and, and in the next generation that adults don't see. Sometimes we don't even see it as a next generation, what God has for us so and what good. he sees in us. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So in verse 13, it says, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? 
Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of Midian. Okay, so this is really an honest question, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I think it's really relevant for today. So Gideon's kind of like, okay, God, I've heard about what you did to Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. I've heard about you um, opening up the Red Sea. You are the God of the locusts who actually, you know, all those stories. He's heard about these wonders that God has done and yet he's hiding in a wine press mm -hmm. threshing wheat. And yeah. so he's kind of like, God, why? And by the way, I think in this season, if we're really honest, um, maybe we're wondering some of the same things. Maybe there's a sense in which during this season, you, you know God is great and God is good, but maybe we're at a point where kind of like, God, why? And can I just encourage you, if you're doubting and struggling right now, don't keep that to yourself. God is secure enough mm -hmm. for you to actually go to him and say, hey, God, why? Help me out here. Help me understand. So next, um, we see that God asks him to do something, asks Gideon to do something that would seem absolutely impossible. Um, let's see, look at the next verse. The Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So from getting at the threshing floor, at the wine press, threshing wheat, to actually being the rescuer of God's people. And um, <laughs> In verse 15, we're gonna see whenever God calls us, we have a lot of reasons why we don't want to obey. Right. Um, verse 15. All right, so, but Lord Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. Yeah, so um, my tribe is the smallest. Right. Of all the tribe, I'm the smallest. That can't be true, but anyway, you kind of get what he's thinking and feeling. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm the biggest nobody from the biggest nobody clan. And there's all these doubts that we have coming into our mind when God taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, I've got something for you. Yep. There's yeah. things I, I think all the time, and maybe you're with me, um, I'm not talented enough. Right. Yeah. I, I, I sense that. I'm not old enough. Yeah. Well, well, you are. <laughs> I'm plenty, yeah, thank you. Maybe um, we are old enough. Okay, thank you. Well, maybe, um, maybe I'm too old. Okay, maybe yeah. there's that. I'm not good enough, I'm not godly enough. I sense that all the time. God, I, mm -hmm. I don't follow you like I really, really yeah. want to. Yeah. I'm not brave enough. Um, anybody else would be better. And this is such a reality for so many people, I think. If you knew all that I had done, you wouldn't pick me. Yeah, that's real. It, yeah, it's real. It's a, it's a comment, it's a thought, probably driven by shame, right? Yeah. But um, I love verse 16. And um, it's kind of like, this is, the, um, this is God dropping the microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, right in front of Gideon, he's just yeah. like, Phew. and so um, in verse 15, um, in verse 16, look at what the Lord said to Gideon. He says this, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. I will be with you. Here's what I love about it. Of course, Gideon in the wine press threshing wheat was not enough. There's mm -hmm. no way he was enough to rescue mm -hmm. his people. Um, we are not enough, especially, or yeah. always, in this season especially, to actually serve people the way yeah. I think God is calling us to serve people. But Jesus in us, I think God is always enough when he calls us. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And Gideon's story really parallels to where we are today. And so I think there's a couple of things that we can drive out of this. And the first is, God chooses his people to make a difference. Mm. In the midst of the worst circumstances, God elevates his people and helps them make a difference. God, God pours hope out through his people. And uh, we see this, we, we can't allow the circumstances that we're walking through to shake the faith that's within us. Yeah. We have to know that God is in control. And the second thing is that God sees more in you than you see in yourself. Thank goodness. And that's, uh, yeah, that's so true. Uh, and, and the angel tells Gideon, you're going to be a mighty warrior. And Gideon's like, I don't even know if I'm mighty enough to provide for my family right now. Mm -hmm. How can I provide for a nation? How can I save a nation? And the funny part is that Gideon does exactly what God, God says that he's going to do. And the reality is God created Gideon. Of course he knows and he put mm -hmm. the things in him that he will do. Gideon def or defeated the Midianites with 300 men, which is impossible. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. But only with God is it possible. And, yes, and so uh, the cool thing is that he knows more about him than he knows about himself. And, and God makes us all mighty warriors for his kingdom, mm -hmm. even when we don't see it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Hey, what we want to do now is, um, like we've done the last couple of nights, there's been some questions that, that you and your family around the table, around the living room, wherever you are, um, can kind of walk through. And the way it works is the question will come up. Um, you can push the pause button. 
and take as much time or little time as you want to to answer that question. Really, there's no right answers um, to these questions, so just allow your, your kids and your teenagers, wherever you are um, around your table, to answer the question. So here's the first question. How can you make a difference in the lives of others? And I love this question because one thing I've been praying for 12 Stone in the church across the country is that instead of being um, selfish with mm -hmm. the stuff that we have, that we would become more selfless yeah. Yeah. and that we would actually be able to be more generous during mm -hmm. this season. So I love this question. Take some time right now and discuss that around your living room. Hey, I know that generated some great conversation. Um, we, we had some great conversation here. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have another question for you, and I think it's equally important in this season. Here's what it is. What is keeping you from doing that? So you just had a conversation with your family about how we could actually be servants in a safe way during this season. Um, now we're asking the question, what is keeping you from doing that? Remember what we talked about, Gideon had a lot of reservations about actually can I really be a rescuer? So remember, we talked about the insecurity of I am not enough. So what is it for you and your family that may be keeping you from serving others the way God's called you to? Well, hey, that's question number two, and that kind of concludes our family devotion for the night. Um, hope you've really enjoyed this time together. I actually have some good news for you. There's actually a part two um, to this time together. And if you're a family and you're closing up, that, that's fine. And Danny, some of you probably have kids running around the room and, and you need to kind of shut it down, which is great. Hey, there is a part two though, and if you're a student or a parent, or if you really want to hear from more from them, um, we're gonna have a time, we're asking them questions about students and anxiety and boredom and all that's going on during this kind of fascinating and um, challenging season that we're in. So we're gonna close in prayer, encourage you as a family to um, gather everybody around and pray together, and then, um, hey, we'll see you tomorrow night. Zach, you wanna pray for us? Yeah. And so God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity and we thank you for the love you have for us. I just ask that um, in these uncertain times, you remind us that you're on the throne and that yeah. you're sovereign, you're our sovereign Lord. And um, I just ask that you open our eyes to opportunities where we can serve others, where we can bless others and show them the love that you have for us and the love that you have for them. Um, be, allow us to be a reflection of who you are. I ask that you allow us to just use this time, show, give us prompts to use this time to grow closer to you, to um, just get in your presence and just um, grow stronger in our faith. Um, we thank you and we love you. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, so that concludes the family devotion portion, part two starting in a moment. Hey, so thank you for sticking with us. You've heard a lot from Emily and me over the last few minutes, but now we really wanna hear from, from these guys on what's going on. Here's the deal, I think, I think there's a lot, um, they need to learn from older people like Emily and me. Um, but there's a lot we can learn from them. So I'm, I'm really excited about hearing what's going on in their hearts and minds. So Emily, you had the first question. Yeah, um, so we obviously just talked a lot about Gideon and we see there's a lot of parallels between what he was walking through and kind of the situation we're walking through. So how did that story resonate with you? Did you, did you draw any conclusions or did anything stick out to you about it? Um, yeah, I think definitely now more than ever, it's really hard for us as students just to really believe in ourselves. I feel like with anything we do, whether it's like ministry or sports or like school, you wanna make sure you have what you're doing, yeah. that you know it 100%, that like you know what you're doing mm -hmm. before you even try to lead somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we kinda need that leadership among students more than ever, so it's really hard. Even if somebody, like even if David were to tell me like, I believe in you, I have to believe, believe in myself. In you. Oh. <laughs> thank you, okay. thank you, thank you. But I have to believe in myself mm -hmm. to actually be able to put that forward. So I think it's definitely, that's something that resonated with me. That's what Gideon was struggling with, right? Yeah. So am I enough? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I would add, like, in the passage, Gideon was, like, angry at God, and he was doubting him and questioning mm -hmm. him. And, yeah. I mean, I've recently learned that, like, when we get angry at God, it means God is close. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because you have to be angry at someone who is present. Yeah. And so, like, that's in these really times good. when we question God, you know, God is close and God's with us, it's just, you know, God wants us to question him because he gives us the answers. Mm -hmm. And know? he can take it, for sure. He yeah. can. And, I mean, even in our current sermon series that we've been doing, it's, it's basically the Psalms, which is one of the yeah. most honest books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff there. It's similar to what Gideon was talking about. 
Hey, let me shift a little bit to maybe um, some more specifics about what students are sensing yeah. and feeling. And um, I'd love for you to make this personal, but I'd love for you to kind of um, get outside your own body and look around just to students, your friends in general. And here's the question I want to throw at you. How are high school students processing what's going on in the world right now, whether it's anxiety, boredom? I mean, you fill in the blank. Well, I would say uh, we're partially busy with schoolwork. Yes. Okay. Um, how much? Like, how, how many times a day are you, or how many hours a day? I'm spending Definitely like an hour. A lot. Well, Look, well I, have I a do very more shortened at schedule. home than I do at school. You have one hour of schoolwork a day? I have a very shortened schedule, okay. so I guess if my teachers are watching this. <laughs> you have seven hours if your but, teachers are watching. Yeah. But um, I think oh, there's a lot of boredom. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I think, like, if we can figure out a way to, like, do something productive instead of just, like, laying around, I've kind of made that a point for myself. Um, what are a couple of things you're doing that like are... Like, I read a whole book yesterday. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, that's crazy. I mean, it was, it was like, it wasn't a super long book, but like... Was it a comic book or like a real no, book? No, no, no. It was a real book. It was okay. a real book. Was it a real <laughs> book? But, <laughs> but I just sat there. Like, I have nothing better to do. I can't go anywhere. So I read yeah. a book and like, it was a good book and... What was it? It was uh, Tale of Three Kings. Oh, that's a good oh, book. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool. Good stuff. Well, I'm a junior, so like, my schedule's... So honestly, I feel like we get more work at home than we actually ever do in school. <laughs> so, I mean, it kind of does suck a bit. Um, me and my friends are trying to keep up with each other, like, by, you know, FaceTiming and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it's definitely not like seeing them in person. Mm -hmm. I think we almost took having school for granted because we didn't realize that gives us eight hours mm -hmm. a day to just connect with other people. Yeah. yeah. So. Right. How, um, how do you think, in a safe way, obviously we have things we're trying to do to be safe in this pandemic, but how do you think um, middle school and high school students could actually perhaps serve um, people that are maybe in the hospital industry or, you know, um, fire and policemen, all those kind of things? Is there something that, that your generation might could do to, just to serve in this season? Um, I think even if you're not hands-on helping, uh -huh. I think those people definitely need encouragement in this season. So whether that's like writing them a letter or making like a nice little gift basket, just little things to remind them that you know, we appreciate what they're doing. Because at the end of the day, people are putting their lives on the line for us. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And I know, like, our school systems are, like, trying to get food out to all these to kids that are at home. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know there's areas where we can go to the school and volunteer or donate food or do things like that to co-ops. Um, I think that's another good way, just because there's a lot of students on free and reduced meals. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can help, you know, provide that during these uncertain times, we just give them a little bit of security. It's really, really mm -hmm. good. Hey, um, there are a lot of parents that are watching right now, and parents are obviously and legitimately thinking through how do I help my student walk through this season. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm just curious, what kind of advice would you give parents of you know how they can help their kids? Mm -hmm. My parents encouraged me to like make a schedule almost for my day. Okay. So like I do my school, I wake up like around eight. Like I kind of made a schedule for what I do. So like I do my schoolwork and then I do this and. I think that's been super beneficial so that I'm not just like trying to figure out something to do, you know? So I'm, you know, I know I'm gonna be doing this during this time and go watch a movie here, but like, you know, filling your time like before the day even starts so that you don't find yourself getting super bored. So is it a bad idea for me to watch all the Avengers movies in the next two weeks? I think there's like 21. <laughs> not at all. Not it's at the all. Avengers you, you Challenge. There's 21. I, th I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of <laughs> Avengers movies. Wow. And they're so wow. good. That's a lot. Yeah. What about you? Um, I know for sure my parents are definitely worried. Like, if I come inside, my mom's with Lysol, like, shh, mm. like she's yeah. going, really? Well, I mean, it's for my safety, of course. Yeah, sure. But I think my mom works from home, so she's more used to being at home, whereas, like, mm -hmm. students like us, we aren't used to that. Right. Like, just being home all the time. Are you stir crazy so think, a little bit? Yeah, definitely. Like, it's hard. But I think for our parents to understand that this is kind of new for us, especially considering will be at home for the next couple of weeks while practicing social distancing, maybe them still allowing us to invite a healthy friend over mm. for like maybe playing a game or just like right. not keeping us so quarantined all the time. You know Cooped what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like we're going crazy, but we're still people. It's okay. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So I just want to encourage, y'all know this already, but want to encourage students and or parents um, there's daily prayer devotionals on Instagram. It's, um, what is it, middle school at 12 Stone mm -hmm. on and Instagram and high school at 12 Stone, at 12 Stone um, on Instagram. Encourage you to look that up. They are really, really well done. Do you do one of them? Yeah, it's coming out later. It's gonna be Ooh, awesome. So yeah. every day, um, parents, kind of watch that with your um, 
with your students, middle school or high school students, and maybe have a conversation with them about that. It's a really, really cool thing mm -hmm. to look at. So um, I, I think, um, man, I think you guys are gonna make a difference in this yeah. season. And you and your friends, this generation, so many of you guys are my heroes as mm -hmm. far as how you walk with Jesus mm -hmm. through this season. So I wanna, Emily, can you just pray over yeah. them <clears throat> and um, all the next generation? Basically that um, we wouldn't just be cooped up, but we would get creative about how do we serve in this season? Yeah. Okay. Um, Lord, we just thank you for the gift of the next generation and Lord, just the way that you have natural born leaders that are carrying out uh, your goodness and just your love and your hope. And um, Lord, it's, it's no secret that these students have high influence with each other. And so God, I just pray that um, you would speak truth, you would speak hope. Um, Lord, that when students are feeling fearful or, or nervous, that they could run to you and, and give you honesty. Um, but God, that you would just ultimately protect us and, and help us, give us discernment in how to walk with you each day. And so Lord, I thank you for these students. Lord, I thank you for the students that are looking to make differences. Um, God, would you show us where we need to be? Would you show us what to do? Would you show us how to love others, how to help others? And um, God, I just pray that through this time that this would ultimately just be an opportunity to draw us closer and nearer to the heart of you. Um, so Lord, we thank you, we praise you. Uh, we know that you are good no matter what our circumstances are. And so Lord, we thank you in your name we pray, amen. amen. Hey, and as always, mm -hmm. if there's anything we can do to serve you as parents or students, please contact your, your local campus student pastor or children's director. Um, we have ideas about how to encourage and help. So anyway, feel free to reach out to them. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon.